Hey, Foot Clan, great show for you today. We've got starts of the week. We dig into the matchups. And of course, we're never not working. Make sure you like the show, subscribe, leave a comment, and enjoy. Today's show is sponsored by Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology. Regular use of Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield provides a continuous, invisible shield of protection against dandruff, itch, and dryness, renewing your protection with every wash. Get up to 100% dandruff protection that's never not working with Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology, available at walmart.com. Foot Clan, today's show is brought to you by Manscaped, the best men's grooming products, the best body hair trimmers on the market and they have their new performance package 4.0 inside that you're going to get the lawnmower 4.0 that's what i was talking about the best body hair trimmer you get the weed whacker ear and nose hair trimmer you get a deodorant a toner there's boxer briefs a travel bag this is everything you need to make sure that you're keeping it right keeping it tight grooming that body uh, it helps you feel better when you when you take care of yourself you just feel better, and Manscaped is helping you do that. Their fourth-generation trimmer has got cutting-edge ceramic blades to reduce the grooming accidents uh, thanks to their advanced skin-safe TM technology. It's a 7,000 RPM motor. No body hair is safe from the lawnmower. It's got a 4,000K LED spotlight just in case you you know you can't see what you're doing. Uh, you got to check them out. They are my go-to for my men's grooming products. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code footballers20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code footballers20 at manscaped.com. Trust me. Go check them out, manscaped.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's Ingram time. Ingram time? That's for you, boys. Do you not even know what's happening tonight? Oh. Pull your head out of your butt. I, you know, I'm that not... was just for you guys, and you both gave me a lemon sour face. I take it back. I hope you both lose. Oh, that's don't you put that evil on me. You here's the truth. Here's the honest <laughs> truth, Mike. And and uh, for the record, I blame you 100. percent I don't even know what you're talking about. So I don't have anything going on tonight. <laughs> you said Ingram. I swear, you said Ingram, like Evan Ingram, 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 and the absence of football. Was my sour face. Mm. Okay. Okay. It's like you look. I, no, I stand some, by it. I sometimes, hope you sometimes hope you, you, you want to see the movie you came to see. And they might show you a different movie that's real clever. But I can't. I bought a ticket for football time and I got Mark Ingram. So, I mean, that exchange. Footland, it's football time for you. You know, the, the real devastating loss time for these two clowns. The reality is, I trying think. Trying to pump you up. I think what we all just experienced here is what we're going to experience tonight, right? We're all... Mark Ingram? Book, yes, we're booking a ticket for football time. We think we're going to get a football game, and instead we're going to get Mark Ingram, and we're going to be like, yeah, okay. I wanted to come see a football game. We, it's come full circle here. <laughs> I don't think we can renew ourselves into Mike's good graces for the remainder of the day. Oh, we're dead. Yeah, no, it's done. But, um, but yeah, we are full circle. We're getting Ingram time tonight. Check that out my spinoff podcast debuting later tonight. <laughs> it's called Ingram Time. <laughs> called general mills and the jets um it's just sound effects and me going pew, pew, pew. yeah I, I look i i'd love it if mark ingram had more than 9.5 carries i'll oh, be i would love i'll that be too. honest with you i would i will not specify why no i would also really like christian mccaffrey to have over uh 45 and a half i'm super into yards. mark ingram nine carries tonight fellas nine oh <laughs> you, come on you are the devil <laughs> you are uh we also have a fantasy football podcast to continue with here the judge the owl both present <laughs> how are you guys doing today doing great doing great okay well that's good we have fantasy forecast starts of the week news and notes never not working the boom boom kicker and we'll work our way back into mike's good graces by the end of today's show i think show. we will um mm. Mm. we'll see we'll see how it goes <laughs> twitter at the ff ballers join the foot.com that is our fantasy football community where you get a bonus weekly show. We have the Injury Blitz podcast. We have the community now with the Discord server, with the community forums. 
Um, <clears throat> it's kind of where you want to hang out throughout the season. So check that out at jointhefoot.com. Never Not Working. Presented by Head & Shoulders, Scalp Shield Technology. Available at Walmart. All right, Never Not Working this week. As fantasy players, we always want to do the extra thing, the uh, better-than-your-league-mates thing so that you can get an advantage each and every week because one win leads to another win, and then you're in the playoffs, and then you dance and sing and all that good stuff. Yeah, yeah, you've got to be uh, keeping it real throughout the week, and I think at this point in the week, the number one storyline or things that that you need to kind of get your house in order upon is – uh, the the situation with Elijah Mitchell, mm -hmm. the situation with the 49ers running backs, which if you haven't seen, they've signed them all. They've signed all of the running backs. Yeah, if, we got more yesterday. I mean, I'm telling Chris Thompson, right? Yes. Added to carry on Johnson. To the practice and, squad. I mean, there are a million running backs there. And so when these, when these, uh, while well, we're bringing this guy in to work out or uh, we're signing this guy to the practice squad, when all these things happened, it was a, it was a decent red flag, right? It, it said that we knew Jermichael Hasty was definitely going to be out, but Elijah Mitchell got a little bit banged up in that game. He hurt his shoulder, I believe. The The word yesterday was it's a little bit more than a stinger. Originally, it was a stinger, expected him to go. Now he missed a day of practice. And, a stanger. And a stanger. That, is that know. worse than a stinger? <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Well, that's that's a grade two stinger is a stanger. Um and so what what's happening here, Trey Sermon was in the concussion, is in the concussion protocol. But here's limited, what you need to be limited a, practice. aware of, Foot Clan, is that San Francisco plays Sunday night. Mm -hmm. If you do not have pivot options, um, we don't know who the starting running back is going to be. It could very easily be Elijah Mitchell, and great, he gets the green light, he's back practice. If he is active, I would expect him to be the primary running back. If he is not active, Trey Sermon could go through the concussion protocol. You can look on your waivers. Plenty of leagues, uh, I'm sure, that people had to make the move and drop Trey Sermon. If he clears and Elijah Mitchell is out, then it's finally Trey Sermon time. And then the other name to know. There is one completely different outcome. Which the, you're about I, to, I'm just saying, you're about to say it. Exactly. It's Jacquez Patrick. Who? Jacquez, yeah, who? Jacquez Patrick was. XFL star. XFL star, he was a practice squad player uh, for the Cincinnati Bengals, and he was signed. We, we mentioned him briefly, I believe, in the news yesterday, but he was signed off the practice squad, which means he is for sure active on the 53-man roster, and he, he stands against that roster for three weeks. So if those other – he is someone you need to pick up. If you've got Elijah Mitchell – or Trey Sermon, you need my, to have my the backup. roster doesn't have the amount of spots it needs to manage this situation. It's enormously frustrating. They're building an army. I'm going into Sunday night football, and I have I'm I'm building my battle plan for Sunday night, and I have Jacquez Patrick right, so I can pivot from Elijah to Jacquez. I checked every single league that I'm in. Sermon's rostered in every single one of them, so mm -hmm. he's not an option for me. But you could try to trade for him on the cheap before you could potentially see this happen. I also have some Monday night players I can pivot into, which is like, I, ha I it's not the best, but I have Dallas Goddard, right? Like if I need to flex Dallas Goddard in an emergency because Kyle Shanahanigans decides it's not Jacquez or Elijah Mitchell, I've got a backup plan in either Evan Ingram or Dallas Goddard. Yeah, I and, and that's a good point that if you have the luxury of making sure that Elijah Mitchell or Trey Sermon or – San Francisco running back X is in your flex. Move them to your flex so that you can go with other positions. The name that I would throw out because he's available, I'm, I'm looking on Sleeper right now, and he is available in about 60% of leagues. That's Jalen Rager, uh, wide receiver for the Philadelphia Eagles. He, he look, He's getting a lot of play. He just missed out on a touchdown for the second week. In a, or it would have been his second uh, touchdown in two games. He's the number two guy. While like we love Devontae Smith, Rager is Rager's playing okay. And I think that I if it were yeah, my I mean, team a, and I were shot. if I were counting on Mitchell, my pivot would be Rager. It would not be to Patrick. I would be way too well, but too freaked out for that. It would yeah. just be based on the news. It would be Kyle Shannon coming out and like if it's Patrick and then Sermon's inactive and Elijah's inactive, then you can feel confident throwing him out there. 
based on the fact they signed him and he's forced onto the 53. But I think you but know it, it, we didn't even mention Trent Cannon. It could you right. could end up being no, Cannon. Right. That's it's, why I'm if it's not Elijah if yeah so uh, you're I'll, right. I'll go to my algebra. If Elijah Mitchell is active, I would play him. This is the if this yes. then that of fantasy yes. football. If he is out and Trey Sermon is active, I would play Sermon. Otherwise, I would go to Rager. What about crying? Is crying an option? Oh, uh, yeah, every I single I time. I don't think it's not an option. I recommend you combo that with a shower, though. There is crying in fantasy football. <laughs> yes, there is. A lot of, of it. Course. See Mike's first two weeks. Um, <laughs> so I think, and then the overarching never not working tip here is that these situations, is, they exist every week. Sometimes you have Monday night football games with injury questions. You need to have a pivot option ready. You can pick them up. And a lot of leagues, you know, you have Sunday players locked, but you can pick up Monday night players yes. in the morning on Monday. Make sure that you are planning ahead. I mean, that is the situation. You don't want to be caught with your pants down, all yes. right? Trust me, it's embarrassing. So, for <laughs> for instance, if you have Elijah Mitchell and you'd rather play him over uh, James Robinson, mm -hmm. just, just, make, just make the call before because so, you, you might not know. So just put it. You might have to put in your other running back who plays early in the morning, even if it's a lower tier guy. You know, you're, you're yeah. throwing in. You're like your only other option is Kenyon Drake. Well, then you gotta you gotta put him in your lineup, maybe. Okay, all right, that makes sense. And uh, a reminder: get up to 100 percent dandruff protection. That's not crying protection. That's just dandruff. Uh, it's never not. <laughs> it is in the shower though. Yes. Uh, that's never not working with Head and Shoulders Scalp Shield technology available at Walmart.com. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. The Colts may play Brett Hundley and Jacob Eason. No. Two wrongs don't make a right, Colts. <laughs> I don't think they are aware of this. Oh, that is. <laughs> the reality here is that Carson Wentz, they, they, are, they are planning on Carson Wentz to not play. They're still hopeful. There's still a, 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 a slim chance Carson Wentz is able to play. Um, and in the event that he does not play, which is the current expectation, they looked at their roster and said, okay, we have Jacob Eason, and we have a big problem. Mm -hmm. uh, so they went and got Brett Hundley, and I would expect him to start over Eason because Eason's terrible. This is why I'm fine in DFS and in streaming playing the Titans defense this week. Sure. Justin Fields will start against the Browns in week three. Mike, against all odds, Justin Fields starting. I know you were okay. not sure of this. I, I have sources inside the Browns locker room. This threw them. Like, th their entire game plan for this weekend completely destroyed. They looked at the news that Andy Dalton was questionable. They had fully prepared for Andy Dalton. They may not even show up now on Sunday because they're so – So smart of Nagy. They've, they've been so outsmarted by the budget magician – like, we, we can't handle this news. So I'm sorry, Cleveland. Odell Beckham Jr., full participant in practice on Wednesday. He will play. He's yeah. going to be back. Here we go. Barring a setback at practice that's like an, a new injury. And and assuming that the Browns do actually show play. up. Yeah, they, yes. Very fair point. And just it's it's easy to uh, be smirch Odell Beckham after the last couple of years. Yes. <laughs> but this <laughs> accurate. Like this is just this is just a pep talk. Come Odell. Fantasy football is so much more fun when you are out there dominating. The The NFL is more fun. So, come on, man. Be good. <laughs> uh, we talked about Trey Sermon limited on Wednesday, Elijah Mitchell. I hope we get a lot more clarity over the course of the week. Let's put it that way. That We'll, we'll give you the practice reports. <laughs> we did just get a quote from Brown's beat reporters. Odell says, we'll see if he's going to play. Maybe that is a bit of <laughs> – see, that to me, just hearing it, is a bit of a shot at the coaching staff. Like, hey, what did Austin Eckler tell us on the show? Players play yeah. and coaches coach. And I think he expected to be out there before week three. So, um, T. Higgins didn't practice day-to-day -day with a shoulder injury. Kenny Galladay limited with a hip injury. Boy, I don't like hearing Kenny Galladay and hip injury after last year. Yeah. That's not good. Evan Ingram, a limited participant. He could. There's a world where Evan Ingram gets all sorts of targets if Kenny Galladay was out. And and there's also a world if Kenny Galladay is out where Sterling Shepard just continues to be yeah. a very good fantasy option. So if he's on your waiver wires, pick him up. Yeah, I, And always Ingram consider the stashed. fact that Daniel Jones is setting us up for oh, well, one of the worst performances of his career. Huge betrayal. Josh Jacobs sidelined during Wednesday's practice. We'll monitor him. LaVisca Chenault practicing in full. will play against the Cardinals. Really quick here. 
one week of kind of like low value, high involvement for LaVisca Chenault, one week of complete nothing. Is he a drop candidate to you? He he is a drop candidate just because I, I it depends on the league format and PPR I'm I'm less like likely to drop him because his manufactured touches will count for something but it, the problem is the the usage that we did see it's it's all it's got to be like all yak and so I worry about those players a lot of time and uh, his quarterback Trevor Lawrence is going deep more uh, either the first or the or second in the league like he's being very aggressive. He's also not been very good with uh, with his deep passes. I just I don't see a world where Chanel overtakes both Marvin Jones and DJ Chark in terms of uh, I might uh, high still, value targets. I think I still like Chanel over DJ Chark. Okay, um, Chark is catching twenty five percent of his passes. Did yes, you realize well, that? I uh, I also said Trevor Lawrence has not Mar been good. Marvin Jones isn't catching twenty five percent of his passes. So you're right though. I mean, I think he they're number one in neutral game script passing. Are they? 69%. I, I, I might have that number wrong. I don't know if somebody, Brooks, you want to look at that. Um, but I saw a a metric that just alluded to the, what you're saying, that they're throwing the ball a ton. Jamison Crowder did not practice mm. Wednesday. Ah. If you're ready for the Braxton Berrios target experience. It's going to keep happening. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, It's not great. I mean, like, every day at lunch around the studio here, we uh, – we, you know, we crinkle up our bags and mm -hmm. we take deep shots into yes. the trash. This would be like standing there from a foot away. Like, it, yeah, it's going to go in, but where's the glory? Mm -hmm. uh, that was today's news and notes. The leader in breaking news alerts is Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app. Join their breaking news alert. Breaking. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Oh, no. We're sorry, Sleeper. That was Newt. <laughs> I don't think they've added what I may have said. <laughs> um, faster than every other source at breaking news. Into the forecast. Fantasy forecast. It's been a rough morning. We had a flat tire <laughs> that we were dealing with this morning. It's always fun. Kids going crazy. But uh, I'm, I'm here. Just a few snafus. Bad stories from around the office. Uh, Thursday night, we talked about it on yesterday's show. So if you want the Ingram breakdown, you can uh, scroll back and click on yesterday's episode to get the Texans and the McCaffreys and the breakdown. Uh, let's start here with the Washington football team at 1-1, one and one, traveling to take on the Buffalo Bills at 1-1. One and one. DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Bills minus 7.5. Whew. The over-under is 45 and a half. Honestly, I'm a little surprised at the line. I think it speaks to the Bills' struggle so far this year on offense. What the, you think that they should be favored by more than seven and a half? I do. I think at home last year, this matchup happening with Taylor Heineke at quarterback, the way the Bills were playing last year, I do think the line would be bigger. And I've seen it bounce between seven and a half and eight. Yeah. Um, but what are the big decisions for fantasy players in this game? Right now, Josh Allen has not been the stallion. It's been shaky. So that being said, he was he had a touchdown taken away from him last game. He would have had a thirty point week and we might not have been talking about him the same way. And we saw three rushing touchdowns from the running backs. We did, which is like a that's, that's a Bills miracle. At the One end of them of the, was a long run. Too. Yeah, at the end of the year, we'll say there were three rushing touchdowns from the <laughs> running backs of the Bills. Um, and also keep in mind, and, and granted, this is this is another difficult matchup. But the first two weeks were uh, Pittsburgh's got a great defense, especially in Week One when they uh, hadn't lost some of their defensive pieces, and Miami is a good defense. So, so you know, at least uh, what we've been seeing, there is cause for optimism after this week um but it's another tough matchup on the washington side terry mclaurin he's he's in uh heineke at least you know through this one game has shown he's going to hyper target him which he he should and heineke what, what's nice about heineke you know the with the unfortunate situation of fitzpatrick is that taylor has come in and he's aggressive like he doesn't play like a scared backup where he's just trying to 
check it down. Maybe I'll get a first down here and there. No, he's out trying to win the game. And that turns into, you know, a lot of targets for for It's amazing boy, how wanting Terry to win McLaurin. the game means throwing the ball to, to, to Terry McLaurin. Well, I'm just like, no, I'm saying as opposed to not – I just want to not lose. I don't want it to be my fault. Well, I, look, what? when 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 Hopkins had different quarterbacks come in that were backups, yep. the ones that looked the best were the ones hyper-targeting yes. him. And so I like that. I'm saying I agree with you. He's actually – last game changed a lot on the season-long outlook for Terry McLaurin. Yeah, it did. Yeah, so Terry McLaurin's in, mm -hmm. uh, and and we've been disappointed with um, obviously with Antonio Gibson. Another very difficult matchup here. The Bills' defenses look great, but I would assume he's in most people's lineups. He is. But let, me, let me ask you a rest of season question for Gibson: Gibson okay. or David Montgomery? Rest of season. <sighs> That's a good one. I I'm going to go with Gibson. I think what the the, the elite talent we've seen uh, will will bear out over the course of the season. Yeah, I'd stick with Gibson. Okay, interesting. Um, I, I think total the, touches will probably be on the Montgomery side, right? I would imagine because Maybe. of the passing work, probably it would be on the Montgomery side. Um, Logan Thomas is the third piece here for the Washington football team that not only can you play, but you probably should. If you've got him rostered, um, I wouldn't pivot to waiver wire type of guys at all. Last week you had the quarterback change. Maybe there was some worry. He had seven targets, um, which is a dream for tight end. Uh, five for 45, and last year the Bills were a good defense, but they weren't great against tight end. It's it's really early to to look at this season's tight end metrics, um, so I, I prefer at tight end to look at last year's. I think Logan Thomas is a good play this week. Washington has still thus far shut down the run, so um, they've been an okay matchup against wide receivers, though, 38.5 fantasy points per game through two weeks. You're starting Stephon Diggs always, but yes. would you sneaky start Emmanuel Sanders? I would. Uh, I, I'm seeing you're seeing enough air yards. You're seeing enough of those deep shots to him. They just have they're not connecting. Uh, we talked about his almost 20 yards average depth of target. That is a, <laughs> that's a bananas number. And Sanders is good enough, and and Josh Allen is good enough that we should see those start clicking sooner than later. 16 opportunities for Devin Singletary in back-to-back -back weeks. No, RB11 last week. No thank you from Mike. Yeah, no thank you from me. I mean, you just brought it up. Washington's been great against the run. They were the second best against the run last year. No. Okay. All right. Not a fresh and new season for Devin Singletary? I think it could be a fresh and new season. I'm I'm not out on Devin Singletary uh, on an every week basis, but this matchup, I'm not playing him against the Washington football and team. And Zach Moss was in for 28% of the snaps, 10, of, 10 opportunities, and you know it, it came through the pipeline that his week one inactive, while it was a healthy scratch, was more so because of they were concerned about the health of Moss. So I expect him to be on the field for more than 28% of the snaps this week. All right, before we jump into the next matchup, I want to keep it fresh right here with HelloFresh. HelloFresh. You get fresh, pre-measured ingredients, mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. You can skip the trips to the grocery store. You can count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. It is America's number one meal kit. I already told you, fall's getting busy. You got flat tires and kids to shuttle to <laughs> sports, games, and Look, HelloFresh recipes save you time that you would otherwise spend meal planning, shopping, chopping. Get back to what matters. They take care of all of that shopping stuff. Shopping and chopping. Shopping and I chopping. I like that. That's right. And um, <laughs> the nice thing is is you, you can't just have a meal kit. You need a meal kit that has family-friendly menus mm -hmm. because then the other people, then you just not just you and your spouse eat the food. Back to school season, easy, delicious, drama-free dinners. That's what I'm into. Go to HelloFresh.com slash footballers14. Use the code footballers14 for up to 14 free meals, including free shipping. Once again, that's HelloFresh.com slash footballers14 and use the code footballers14 for up to 14 free meals plus free shipping. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. And Foot Clan, if you're looking for NFL action, you want to watch I am. all of the games, but unfortunately you might not be able to get DirecTV where you live. It's not a problem because you can stream the 2021 NFL season on the NFL Sunday ticket, mobile, online, whatever device you want to do, your live out-of-market games every Sunday afternoon. You can go to NFLSundayTicket.tv 
and see the, your favorite team, no matter where you're living. Mm-hmm. You can watch the out-of-market games. You can uh, have the uh, Fantasy Zone channel. You can have the Red Zone channel. Uh, you can stream them all. You can watch the 30-minute recaps. Uh, you can follow up to 20 of your favorite players every Sunday. It is a really, really nice thing, and you could do it even if you can't get DirecTV where you live. There's no satellite required. Go online to nflsundayticket.tv slash Sunday ready right now to see if you are eligible. Pro tip, use promo code BALLERS2021 at checkout, and you could save 15%. Again, to see if you're eligible for the NFL Sunday Ticket streaming package, go to nflsundaytickettv slash Sunday ready and use the code BALLERS2021 to save 15% when you sign up. The Chicago Bears travel to Cleveland. We were just talking about this matchup. The Browns, seven-point home favorites over on DraftKings Sportsbook. Over-under is 46 points, and this is my... Andy's Almost Upset of the Week. I think the Bears win the game. I think Justin Fields' debut... That's not almost. ...is a victory. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I you're right. I think they There's almost rules here. They Andy. almost win the game, just like the Cowboys almost beat the Chargers last week. In my other almost upset, Ooh. Uh, I like what Justin Fields brings to the table. I've been impressed so far through two games with the Bears' defense. It was a couple big plays against the Rams that made them look bad, but play by play, they've been a pretty stout, pretty strong defensive unit, and. The Browns have injuries at wide receiver. They've had struggles at times moving the football. The Bears have been good against the run, the strength of the Browns. And um, I don't know. I just got a feeling about this one. On the Bears' side, starter-wise, you know, David Montgomery's averaging 20.5 opportunities per game. It's funny because Gibson's at 20, so they're both getting a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And Justin Fields, I mean, what is his – Day, what does his debut mean for Allen Robinson, Darnell Mooney, and, Do- and David Montgomery? When talking about the wide receivers, Allen Robinson's always going to be in your lineup. He, you start him, he's good. Darnell Mooney is the exciting question here, the one that you're watching on that side of the ball to see if his targets are up near Allen Robinson's, if he's actually able to connect on some of these deep shots. Dar- Darnell Mooney has outstanding speed, and and – uh, Fields can throw a good deep ball. So if you wanted to take your shot, that glory play, and throw Mooney in your lineup, I I, I don't hate it. I mean, it's, it's like, you know, Mike, you mentioned Jalen Rager. There's always these, these players who can get a bomb touchdown to save a week no matter how they do in the rest of the game. And Darnell Mooney is in that category with Justin Fields, who himself is definitely – a, a, I mean, a very startable yes. uh, quarterback this week. I, I, with his rushing baseline, he should be, you know, a low-end quarterback one. Yeah, I, I agree with that. The What will be interesting to watch here is how much does Fields actually run when he is the starter, at least for half of uh, practice here. Right. Because uh, he was the starter early on. Because uh, last week when he was – thrust into game action that turned into 10 attempts now it didn't wasn't huge yardage uh on the ground but those 10 rushing attempts you know that's that's 10 times that he's not dropping back to to throw uh so let's see what that does for the the volume of the pass catchers on the other side you always start Nick Chubb yep he's so good at running the football Kareem Hunt had 38 percent of snaps flex last week is he flex worthy in a tough matchup I think I, yeah yeah. I I mean, do you do you consider him an every week start? An every week flex where sometimes if the matchup looks right for him, he you can toss him into your running back two consideration. I love Austin Hooper this week. I think he's going to have an opportunity just with targets and this team needing him. Uh, the tight ends were kind of the leaders in the passing game last week, albeit not a, not a exciting lines, but I think he had five catches. Uh, so I think he is a spot start this week. Back home. That's the big question. Mark. You can take your you could take your chance. That's the, the big, big plays is where the Bears have been struggling. They're twenty eighth against opposing fantasy wide receivers this year because of big plays. Forty two fantasy points a game. It's hard to imagine. You know, if you distribute, let's say you give them thirty. I mean, they, they've been giving up forty two. You give thirty fantasy points to opposing fantasy wide receivers in this game. How does Beckham not end up with half of that? 
do you make the call? Let's say it's tonight. You got to play Brandon Cooks, or you are hoping that Odell Beckham plays on Sunday. Is that Ugh, I play, where's I'd, your level of confidence? I'd probably just play Cooks. Okay. And I I do the crying thing from earlier. <laughs> what about you, Jay? I I would go Cooks if if there is a legitimate option. I would rather wait on Odell Beckham, but so that's that's my approach. And and in most most cases, I think you will be able to take a wait and see approach. If you're not able to take a, a wait and see approach, and you just really need to start, there's reason for optimism with Jarvis Landry out that he could just be really really involved and and necessary to the game plan. So I I don't hate starting him, but this is a free, I mean you want to talk about a really exciting kind of unexpectedly exciting game to mm -hmm. watch. Paying attention to Justin Fields and Odell Beckham, both sides of the ball, there's something cr critical for fantasy to get our eyeballs on. I'm very, very much looking forward to this game. The Baltimore Ravens travel to take on the Detroit Lions in Detroit. DK Sportsbook has this game at Ravens minus nine over under is 49 and a half. Gives the Lions 20 points, the Ravens 29. And um, I brought this up already. Tyson Williams right now. He's leading the league in – in uh, or I guess he's second in the league in yards per carry. The Lions ha are 31st so far through two weeks. They're getting run all over. I think Tyson's a great start this week. He's a week. sensational play this week. And I, I think he has distinguished himself on a couple of the important differentiators for a play caller, which is speed to the edge, explosiveness, like Latavius Murray, Devonta Freeman, they're going to be worked into situational football, goal line football. But even after the Latavius touchdown last week, they had another goal line opportunity. Now, Lamar ended up scoring, and you get reminded why in the offseason yeah. you had doubts about Dobbins or Edwards scoring a lot. But it was Tyshawn out there. Tyson. Tyson. Yeah, Tyson. Tyson out there. So, interesting I think matchup. That, I think that the – if they if the Ravens don't make an adjustment to who's on their active roster, I think you can be confident that this is down to two players. I think it's down to Williams and it's down to Murray. You saw Latav or uh, you saw Devontae Freeman get a handoff, which uh, and he ended up with a 31 yard carry to the outside. But it was not Freeman who made this happen. This was an this was an incredible run design. The the blocking assignments were worked to perfection, and as you were watching it, Freeman. He, he didn't have the juice anymore. Tyson Williams on that particular carry would have scored. And in fact, Devontae Freeman with a 31 yard carry, he saw one more attempt in the game and he finished with 29 rushing yards. Like I think Freeman is done. It's now between Latavius and Tyson and we need Tyson to hold on to the ball. Yeah, that that is the that's, issue. That's the that's the only issue with Williams for me. Yeah, Tyson has looked really, really good. Fumbled in both games. I don't think he was credited with with one in Week One, but there was this play where he was going. No, out he of was. It was a minus one. Yeah, and so and then obviously fumbled on the goal line. If he fumbles again, I I think at that point the Ravens have to question. Okay, can can we can we trust putting the ball in this guy's hands? But um, he's looked great. I think you could start both of these running backs because this is a game. Uh, you know, I agree. They're, they're they're favored by a, a ton. The Lions' defense has not been good, and you would expect the second half of the game they're just going to be just running the ball all over them. However, to get that lead, the the Lions' secondary it's yes. gone. It's gone. Yeah, it's literally it was bad to start the year, right? Like, oh, you could throw on the Lions, but they've lost their cornerbacks. Uh, they were starting. Um, obviously they had Akuda, uh, the last year's uh, rookie. He's out, and then they uh, had a, another starter uh, who was a rookie this year who got injured last game. And you saw the second half of how much worse they got. So you know you want to fire up Marquise Brown, um, Mark yep. Andrews. Yep. Yeah, I mean there it's zero a targets inside the ten through two games for Mark Andrews, which is like he's been a touchdown dependent player for. A while, any concerns with Andrews? I, I don't the way that people are worried about Kittle. No, I, I'm not worried about Andrews. If if you, I mean, he's not the guy that we saw in Lamar's huge breakout season because Lamar's not going to throw 35 touchdowns. It's just not the you know the reality, the baseline 
the median average for Lamar. Um, but he is going to get his. I mean, you look at last year and, you know, weeks two and three, Mark Andrews just disappeared. He wasn't targeted. He had, you know, 50 yards between those two games combined and everyone was freaking out. And then the next two weeks is the tight end three both weeks. So it's just a matter of game flow. I'm, I'm fine with Mark Andrews. On the, other, on the other side of the ball, you have the king of pass attempts. Jared Goff, 93 pass attempts. The game scripts you're seeing, they're the game scripts you'll see moving mm -hmm. forward, which is deficits in the second half, a maybe the best top three check down running backs in football with DeAndre Swift, sure. um, which is free yardage for Jared Goff. It's, it's free points for DeAndre Swift. I mean, Swift has been very, very good on a very, very bad team that doesn't have the personnel to compete week to week. 16 targets through two weeks. That's one more than Christian McCaffrey. Swift is a must-start rest of season, in my opinion, and I think he may get more than the 60-plus percent of snaps we're seeing right now. I, I would agree. He's matchup proof because you want the opportunity to big, uh, you know, a big play, and the receptions, uh, you know, if you're playing in a half – PPR, a full PPR, I think those will make sure that he's not going to completely just destroy you on a bad week. Whereas Jamal Williams, he is a, a guy I'm willing to play half of this year. It just depends on the right matchup. This one isn't against the Ravens. Um, obviously, he could fall in the end zone. Uh, he, he should be involved in the game plan, but it's, it's just tough when you're splitting touches. Uh, you've got to have the talent of DeAndre Swift. So he's the only uh, guy on that side of the ball, along with obviously T.J. Hawkinson, um, those two players are. Do you like him, Hawkinson? I love Hawkinson. Um, yeah, I mean those two guys are are very very talented and unfathomably necessary. And I would say if this is deeper league, lower in flex start. <clears throat> But Quintus Cephas, I, I love Quintus Cephas. He's in play for me. You saw seven targets. In week one, despite just 35% of the snaps, and Tyrell Williams is already out, Cephas was the go-to guy that you saw his routes jump up to almost 90%. Another seven targets connected on a deep shot right at the beginning of the game. Sc has scored in back-to-back -back weeks, so he's, like, I'm not saying start him over your known commodity players, but it, you could certainly do worse when you're looking for that uh, later week flex play. I agree. I think he's a good player, and they look for him in the end zone a lot. All right, the Colts at 0-2. Woof. With a quarterback problem, take on the Tennessee Titans Well, they in entered Tennessee. the season with a quarterback problem, Andy. <laughs> Their starter was Carson Wentz. Uh, well, I think expectations were better than 0-2. Not from me. DraftKings Sportsbook has the Titans as five-and-a-half-point home favorites. Over-under is 48 points. Got the Titans in this one. <laughs> yeah, I this. mean, Derrick Henry is the number one running back right now after a monster week two. Um, he has more fantasy points than 30 other teams combined running back output. That can't be true. Is that true? That That's it's, it's very possible. True. So only the Browns and Lions running backs have more fantasy output at running back than Derrick Henry? Wow. Uh, I well, to be fair, I believe it. He's kind of like a running back room. He is yeah. a room I, I was gonna say, running to, down the field. To be fair, when you say, <laughs> okay, uh, what what is the Titans team running back output? It's Derrick Henry. Like, yeah. That's basically, he has all of it. So, yeah, you play him. You play A.J. Brown and Julio Jones in this matchup. The mm -hmm. Colts are struggling on the back end, 28th against fantasy wide receivers. Uh, A.J. Brown just needs to catch the ball. Julio Jones, I think it's going to be another big game. I was impressed. Six for 128 last week. Would have been better right, if a heel had come yeah. down in bounds. He would have had six for about 140 and a touchdown, or seven for 140 and a touchdown. Uh, this is the get-right game for Ryan Tannehill, I think, as well, uh, in terms of being a viable streaming quarterback. Uh, I think I wouldn't be feeling confident in him as an every-week play right now. No, I, I, I could agree with that. And I'm a little less confident than you in – in I think there's a lot of really good streaming options that I might prefer. I mean, you picked up Justin Fields. I would play Justin Fields over Ryan Tannehill just because there is an output uh, 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 you know, that happens here where 
the Colts can't get anything going, and you just don't need to throw the ball much or do anything to win this game outside of Derrick Henry. I don't expect that to happen, but that is – you could see the pathway for that to happen. So Ryan Tannehill scares me as someone to rely upon this week. On the other side, the real, real, real question is Jonathan Taylor. Jonathan Taylor, look, this he's is – He's been getting a free pass. Mm -hmm. He's been getting a free pass. He has not been good so far this year. Um, the offensive line for the Colts has not been good. Obviously, they, they rushed their left tackle back. They were down the right tackle, and uh, obviously Quentin Nelson coming back off of injury. They've just not looked right. This is a game and a coaching staff that we've seen this coaching staff adapt to the personnel, which is wonderful. I love that. The problem is they're adapting to real, real, real bad personnel this week if Carson Wentz is out. Say whatever you want and make the jokes about Carson Wentz being bad. He is infinitely better than their backup options here. So I would imagine they're going to try to build a game plan around running the ball as much as possible, shortening this game clock, um, and giving Jonathan Taylor a lot of work. But on the flip side, you got to think the Titans are going to put everyone in the box. Right. So... I, I, I he's a huge question to me. I I worry. Just have uh, to play him. Yeah. I oh guess. yeah. I'm I'm still playing him. This isn't the. It's not so terrible that I'm thinking about benching him because you don't have a option that you, that's going to be strong enough to play over Jonathan Taylor. Extremely disappointing if Carson Wentz does not play this week after the uh the the big breakout game for Michael Pittman Jr. 12 targets, 8 receptions over 120 yards. And he did an excellent job at finding the the soft spot in the zone, finding the place to sit down and hopefully moving forward with Carson Wentz, he can he has earned that trust that Carson Wentz will just automatically start looking for him, believing that Pittman is is doing the right thing and, and getting open. But this week, man with Brett Hundley even though the matchup is super juicy, I think it's he's a. Uh, I, I think if you have if you have a double flex, okay, I'm I'm willing to to take that shot off of the hundred yard game. I'm not. I, I I'm not playing uh, Pascal or Pittman it, unless Wentz is active. I I just don't believe in these backup quarterbacks. Yeah, I, it'd be scary. It'd be scary if you did it. So you play trembling finger to put him in the lineup. Like you, would, I'd play Odell Beckham. Well, <laughs> yes. Yeah, but that takes a lot for me to say. Okay, fine. But let's look at other players. Uh, Jacoby Myers against yeah. the Saints. Yeah, I would play Myers. You would play. Uh, let's Sammy Watkins against Detroit. <sighs> I, mean, I said you, double sure. flex. No, case, yeah, I specified mean, lower tier player. Yeah, I think I would. All right. The Los Angeles Chargers at one and one take on the one and one Kansas City Chiefs. DraftKings Sportsbook line is Chiefs minus six and a half. Over under is 55. Ooh. 55! Uh, how are we feeling about Justin Herbert so far this year? He is our quarterback 10 on the week, which is not necessarily a ringing endorsement here. 26th in week one, 21st in week two. Fantasy finishes. You would have expected a lot better than 21st against the Dallas defense in week two. Yep. Didn't happen. Now the pass attempts, 47, 41, you love that. The yardage, 337, 338, you love that. Just no touchdowns. Yeah, it's it's really been is wild. That buy, is that a buy it's, low? It, it, it could be, or it could be a problem of this offense in the red zone, and and I can't tell which it is. Both games ended up, you know, I, I, I had Herbert as my start of the week last week because you watched him play week one. He looked great, just rifling the most. I still th he throws the prettiest ball in the NFL to me right now. When he throws, uh, it, it's just a laser beam, perfect spiral. I love um, what he's doing on the field. But every time he's gotten into the red zone, it's in, in the field shortens. He's really struggled. He threw the weird fumble out of the out of the end zone in week one, but then got in the you know to trouble last week. Threw some red zone. Uh, picks and that's you know if you can't score the touchdowns you're you're going to be worthless for fantasy so in this matchup against uh Kansas City you would ex 55 points you'd expect it's going to be great right I feel okay with Herbert this week I mean yeah. that the, we're, the, we're excited about Keenan we're excited about Mike Williams evolution in the offense we're excited about Eckler 
All of, and we're and Cook is okay in this game. So I think yeah. Cook so there's four play. four pass catchers. How do you not take the pass thrower? <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's fair, and they're they're projected for 24 points. So if the, he just can't turn the ball over in the red zone again. Well, it gets easy on the other side. And by the way, Patrick Mahomes texted. He's super furious that you said that Justin Herbert throws a prettier ball than him. He does. Um, oh, not my a gosh. better ball. No. But it's, Pat, it's very aesthetically pleasing. Yes, I agree I'm with talking Jason. about the aesthetics. Uh, Pat, Patrick Mahomes. Like, you know, I am more aesthetically pleased by Patrick Mahomes' football. You know how when uh, you see like water pouring out of a hose or an area, but something I don't know what the effect the, is called, but yeah. the, the water is literally not moving in the stream mm -hmm. because it's it's just so tight uh, tight together. But you know that the water is on. Like that's what that's what the Herbert ball looks Mike like. Mike gets it. Yeah. Yeah, he throws the second most aesthetically pleasing ball in football. <laughs> uh, Mahomes, yep. Tyreek, uh huh. Yeah. Travis Kelsey, sure. Yeah. I would play a player that has what? What did you say the style was? Twenty or uh, eight straight twenty point weeks or something? Nine, nine. His last nine that's, games that's have been outlandish. over twenty fantasy points. Uh, the only other player uh, of that caliber is Christian McCaffrey. Have we had a wide receiver ever do that? Seriously, like I, I don't, don't have the answer, but I don't think a wide receiver has done nine straight twenty point games like. Mm. Jerry Rice says, what? Well, okay. When we were tracking players on our phone, I mean. Yeah, sweet. Sweet 1980s <laughs> reference, bro. Um, I think McCall Hardman's a dart throw in a 55-point game uh, where he was kind of involved last week. You could do worse than, like, would you play Sammy Watkins or McCall Hardman? Sammy Watkins. Yep. Okay, okay, okay. But I, I don't okay. disagree. That he's earning more time, earning more. You want to do a Sammy Watkins, McCall Hardman water bet? <laughs> Not really, but come sure. on. Okay, fine. Water bet. Oh, those are the kind of bets I love. Now, uh, Clyde edwards alaire Uh, next topic, please. No, I mean, this is an important one, right? B people have to make a decision as to whether they can start him or not. And I, 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 I definitely think you could start him. Um, the expectations have to be managed. This isn't a superstar. I think we brought this up on on uh, Spotify Green Room yesterday that uh, this is a player who's getting you know the vast majority of snaps and usage uh, on a great offense. It hasn't gone his way. He has not gotten the touchdown. He hasn't been uh, receiving the the passing work that you want. But at the running back position, I mean, there's a lot of or even at your flex, there's a lot of questionable starts. And the behind-the-scenes metrics say that he should be fine. This is the Chargers' defense that so far through two weeks has given up a lot of fantasy points to running back, a 55-point over-under and a favored game at home. It has not worked out for Clyde Edwards-Alaire this year. But if you think that you're going to go through, you know, 17 games where Clyde Edwards-Alaire doesn't have – he's just – he has no good games the whole season – that that's not actually going to be what you look backwards and see. Clyde Edwards Alaire, Jason, or Damian Harris against the New Orleans Saints. Damian Harris. Clyde. Clyde Edwards Alaire or the Gas Man against the Las Vegas Raiders. Gas Man. Clyde. Okay. All right. The the problem with Clyde has never been the externals. Plays on the best offense in it's football. The internals. It's the internals. The ex just, the, ex just the externals look great. You play the Chargers. You play for Mahomes. Um, Damian Harris, by the way, uh, I tweeted this out yesterday morning or the day before. He's currently number five in the NFL at the running back position in total touches. This offense is going really? to be. It's going to be Damian Harris through the entire year. Yeah, he is. Did you? Oh, he is a good player. He's only seen four targets. Uh, and. The t the Four one, more than I expected. But the one target he saw against the Jets, it turned into two yards. But did you guys see it? This was like a full jump, three, 180 catch to contort his body in midair because the pass was so bad, and he came down with it. And you're like, how was, how was Damian Harris making that catch, and you refused to scheme anything up I can tell to, you why. to check down to James him? White. But there's, there's, there's plays where Harris is on the field. The Saints, let's crazy. talk about them here. The Saints traveled to New Orleans or to New England to take on the Patriots. DraftKings has the line at Patriots minus two and a half. I wonder what the bookmakers are doing spinning their head about the Saints through two weeks because yeah. they're doing what we're doing. The over-under is 42 and a half, not yeah. a high over-under, two good defenses, 
two shaky quarterbacks. Uh, I mean, Alvin Kamara has been, been one of the worst per touch from scrimmage backs through two weeks, but you're playing him. Yeah. It's not a great matchup. Manage your expectations, but you're playing him. Kind of the way you feel about Gibson this week against the Bills. You're playing him. Damian Harris uh, tied with Joe Mixon. Second most yards after contact behind Derrick Henry. 26 opportunities, 17 opportunities. That's what I was talking about. Again, not a good matchup for him either, but I'm I'm putting him out there. No question about it. Mm. Yeah, this is this is a you don't uh, bench Damian Harris after those opportunities. Yeah, this is a very questionable game for fantasy uh, in the sense that you know, obviously DraftKings sportsbook has this as a very low over under, um, not a lot of implied points being scored, and both defenses we know are are very very good. Um, I'm not as bullish on Damian Harris this matchup as as Andy is. Um, he was obviously, you know, just fine last week against the Jets, but the Saints, the Saints D line is, is very, very good. And I'm wondering what we're going to see out of Mac Jones, um, against kind of someone that I, th I think he hasn't really had to deal with a defense of this level yet. And so I'm, I'm just expecting basically a lousy fantasy output to two teams that are going to need to run the ball a lot, which is good for Damian Harris um, as far as opportunities. But if you don't score a lot... And then... I like both defenses. Yeah, yeah. For fantasy. Like, I play both of them this week. Um, I, Who I... scores more, the offenses or the defenses? <laughs> yeah, I I think the game plan for the New England Patriots in every game this year is handing the ball off to Damian Harris and managing Mac Jones. And I think, frankly, that's what the game plan is for the Saints. I mean, the the over under on passing yardage for Jameis Winston was like two twelve or two oh five, something like that. Mm. And I would take the under. I mean, this this is not he doesn't have the weapons right now to have a game. That's the that's what I look at with the Saints. It's like you don't have enough players to give you the game you want unless you're picking up yards out of the backfield with Alvin Kamara. So I just vetted this stat that shows up in the doc about Jacoby Myers. I can't even believe it. Saw Rondale Moore get a game ball last week, scoring his first touchdown for the Cardinals. Jacoby Myers has never scored a touchdown. 137 career what targets. What a loser. 137 targets. You look at all of last year, all these games he's involved, Never scored. he's never gotten into the end zone. So I, probably not going to do it this week either. Mac, Mac, you got to help your buddy out here. Yeah. Get him a touchdown. Hunter Henry and Johnny Smith have been not good at all for fantasy purposes. I would not be taking a shot at them in this matchup. And then on the other side, I mean, it's just Kamara, right? And yeah. bench everybody else. It's Kamara, Damian Harris, James White. Those are the three options in this game. They're both teams are going to run the ball a lot. Yeah. And James White's worth bringing up because he has had uh, six receptions each week. So the baseline is there actually got a rushing touchdown last week, which was weird that it wasn't Damian Harris's. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think all three of those are startable. Um, obviously uh, Kamara, the only one that's exciting. Starts of the week. Starts of the week for week three. Let's begin at the quarterback position. Why don't uh, Why don't you kick it off, Mike? All right. Uh, what position did you say? I was not prepared. Quarterback. All right. Let's start at the quarterback position. We all We all know I, what's coming, but I'm doing it anyways, baby. Daniel great jo Scott. Daniel Jones, man. He's a top five quarterback right now. And he's <laughs> Andy's face says it all. It, like watching the 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 Giants game, the primetime game against Washington was fabulous because we have I have my chat with you guys, and then I have my chat with uh with my D and D crew who are what there's a lot of sports over, Nerd. over there. Oh yeah. Big nerds. <laughs> big time. Those guys are big Those nerds. Those guys are Yeah, well not me. <laughs> right. I'm the cool one in the group. <laughs> Clearly. Yeah, you got uh, tattoos. But like almost simultaneously, I get a message. He, Jones does something dumbfounding. Get a message from Andy. J Daniel Jones sucks so bad. Get a message from uh, my D and D crew. Daniel Jones sucks so oh, bad. At the same time. At the same time, and and then the moment right after both of you said that, 
Daniel Jones just went on a tear and looked great for the rest of the game. He's running at a very high rate. He's like he's getting like People the opportunities don't think are I there. I can say a nice thing about Daniel Jones, because, and they're right. Yeah, oh, okay, good, good, good. No, touche. But as of right now, he's a top five guy, and the yeah. matchup is there. The Atlanta secondary is atrocious. So if you get the passing game going, combined with uh, what Jones is doing on the ground, he's a quarterback one streaming option this week. Uh, for me, I'm if going. You, if you have courage, yeah, no, he, he is a good streaming option. He, uh, I think he was he my stream of the week. I, yes, uh, I I agree with you here. Uh, the matchup is good, and he's been running the ball so much. My start of the week is Jalen Hurts again. I I think at Dallas, look, last week he had exactly zero passing touchdowns, and he finished as the quarterback ten. He had 80 rushing yards. The dude could have 150 rushing yards if they used him more. Like, I'm watching this game. Justin Herbert had one passing touchdown against Dallas, finished in the 20s. Exactly. Jalen Hurts had none against Dallas, uh, and yeah. now he plays Dallas this week. Yeah, so, um, I, I, you know, he his rushing baseline is so high, um, and I, I really don't think that Philly – their defense has been good, but I don't think they're going to stop Dallas. So there's going to need to be more points scored in this game. Um, and Hertz has just been so consistent with his rushing ability as the passing work comes more and more. And I think it can against Dallas. So he's a good start. Matthew Stafford's my start of the week at the quarterback position. Yes, they play Tampa Bay. No, mm. I don't care. Tampa secondary giving up 300 plus yards in both games. Brady's going to score on the Rams defense. And frankly, the Rams are going to give up on the run against this they Tampa have. Bay defensive front. The, the the couple games that we've seen McVay play against Tampa Bay, he has completely abandoned the run. He just goes all pass heavy. So and, I'm and, for it, this. and it's worked. And and you also have a banged up running back in Daryl Henderson, yep. who you your most trusted running back is hurt. Matthew Stafford is going to have an opportunity in this game to get Higby involved, to get Woods involved, and obviously Cooper Cup of Coffee is always oh, involved. Oh, Cooper Cup of Coffee. Cup of coffee. Yes. My running back start of the week, it is Chase Edmonds. Oh, my. From the Arizona Cardinals. They're seven-point favorites. They're, the team total is implied at I nearly like 30 points. He's seeing half the carries. He's seeing four targets a game. Chase Edmonds has been a top-20 running back both weeks without a touchdown. So, like, once those start to hit for him, he's going he's gonna to catapult into this – fringe running back one discussion and my running back start of the week is a guy who has been super disappointing it's Saquon Barkley so it's time it's time week I one completely agree with you week one he had 48 percent of the snaps week two on a short week of rest because it was Thursday night football he was up to 84 percent of the snaps and had a 41 yard breakaway run against a very good Washington D line with 16 opportunities. Now we're in week three. He's had extra days of rest coming off the Thursday night football. He's against the New York Giants at home, or uh, <laughs> the New York Giants he's are. A, he's always playing against his own offensive he, line. He is during the fair. week. Um, <laughs> that's true. That's really, he's really sad Falcons. and true. Um, but the the Giants are favored. <laughs> They're at home. They're against Atlanta. Like if if it's not this week, when is it going to be? Why? So. And every fantasy player has to to make decisions with limited information from the year, and so you have to plant your flag. And so I would, I'm with you. I would go. He's a trade target for me. I would be targeting Saquon Barkley because the wheels on the Daniel Jones bus they fall off right when you don't expect them to. The running game is going to be the key to them succeeding. They have a good defense. I am. Uh, I fully endorse that start of the week. And yeah, you, you look down and you realize that you never actually had tires the whole no, time. You've been riding on the wheels. Um, yeah, I kept thinking of analogies for the Daniel Jones situation in my head. I spared you for most of them. It was like the it was the good looking food in the fridge that ends up being moldy after you get closer. Mm. Oh yeah. I mean, it's all of those ones. And you're halfway I'm, through, and then uh oh. And I I I'll be the first to say he's a great runner. He's sure. a great runner. He'll and that helps the fan. I mean, you run for nine, nine for ninety four. Don't matter what you do in the passing game, mm -hmm. and hopefully Kenny Galladay is okay and they can get it going. And I can, I'm happy to eat crow if he's great. But I'm gonna bet on the side of the rest of the sample. I don't blame you. But this week he could get it done. My running back start: Tyson Williams, running yes, back for please. the Baltimore Ravens. I'm. Uh, I want to give everyone out there a pat on the butt. Start this dude this week. 6.9 yards per touch, six targets so far this year. Detroit's defense has given up over 30 points to the running back position in the last two weeks. Well, 
Yeah, I mean, when Aaron Jones comes to town, what did he catch? Four receiving touchdowns? Uh, yeah, one one rushing, four or three receiving. Or, okay. But I think – and one was the, the old tap pass. Yep. Tyson's going to give you 15 points this week. That's what I want to tell you. I think you're going to get that. You saw the carries go up. Keep that in mind, too. 9 to 13 after all this, oh, we're going to activate Devonta Freeman. You know, just deactivate him from your mind and play Tyson. Can we get Baltimore to start doing the tap pass? Like, it's, it's not that's that a, hard. That's a good point. It's not that hard. You just, instead of holding it for him to grab, just drop the ball. Yeah. And the nice thing is, it doesn't even Do it matter. For if, us. Like yeah. it doesn't matter if they fumble because then it's just a incomplete pass. Yes, I get it going. All right, my wide receiver started the week. I'm going a combo off of that game with Tyson Williams, Hollywood Brown, Marquise Brown. He's taking on the Detroit Lions as we discussed. But look at what is happening for Hollywood Brown. He closed out last year over the final six games. He was averaging 14 points per game, fantasy points per game. This year through two games, that, that number is at 18. He's seeing a 30% target share, and the line secondary is terrible. I do believe by the end of the game, the Ravens will be running out the clock, but they're still going to pass to get those points at, at least a little bit, and Hollywood Brown has been playing sensational football. If, if you could pick any other player to, to, to frolic through the meadow holding the hand of Daniel Jones, it would be Hollywood Brown. Well, I mean, that's a perfect combo where it's – this is a nice start for these two players where they've let you down before. Mm -hmm. I've been impressed. Maybe the number change helped him out. Uh, Jason, your yeah, that, wide receiver start. The matchup is so good. He, this was the first time in his career that Hollywood Brown has ever actually really had an off season and a full training camp and all of that stuff. Would you play Hollywood Brown over James Robinson, Marvin Jones, and Michael Pittman? I well, Not over Marvin. Marvin's close, but I think I would take uh, yeah, I would go Hollywood. Because that's what I've got in my lineup, oh, baby. Okay. Let's, let's go. So that uh, was a selfish question. It was 100%. I mean, it was just a question from me for me. <laughs> um, my start Asking of the week. for myself. Uh, uh, first time, long time. My <laughs> my wide receiver start of the week is Cooper Cup of Coffee. Ex <laughs> except nobody has, nobody has that question after what he's done these first two weeks. But he is going to dominate. Um, so I'm going to say he's hot. Yeah, he's all. Oh, He's a hot cup of coffee. Um, Cortland Sutton is I'm my sorry, Cooper. <laughs> wide receiver start of the week. Cortland Sutton broke back out last week. He was easily one of my favorite players. Broke back out? He did because he had his breakout two a, years that's ago. That's not a phrase. No, but I, I can still say it. I can say things that aren't phrases, just string words together. I love it. Um, Continue. I mean, two years ago, he had his breakout. Broke back Sutton? And then... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, so, anyways... Shouldn't he, have said that out loud. <laughs> He was one of my favorite players this offseason. <laughs> Remember, if, if you were with us through the whole offseason, I absolutely loved Sutton. I, he, he was on route to become a my guy. And then, it, and then the injury. It just looked like he was way delayed on his recovery yes. and then his routes and tra training camp. And he misses preseason games, and you have all these worries. Well, worry's gone. He's back. He was is that what it is now? It's worry's gone? Yes, it's worry's gone because my worry was never, ever, ever talent with Cortland Sutton. My worry was health was, is he back to full strength? When will he be the Cortland Sutton that did break out two years ago? And it was last week. He was the wide receiver six, and, it, and that was without a touchdown. Nine receptions for 159 yards on 12 targets. Uh, I know it was against the Jaguars, but good news. He's against the Jets, so uh, I think you should definitely be starting Cortland Sutton. Without Jerry Judy, there was a lot of like, oh, there's a cage of Hamler, there's a Tim Patrick. It's Cortland Sutton. He's the he's the dude. Julio Jones is my start of the week at wide receiver. Like I said, I kind of summarized it in the game breakdown, but you know he's facing an indie defense that's given up 44 fantasy points to opposing wide receivers in back-to-back -back games. Uh, if Indianapolis decided to watch the film for the previous Tennessee game. Uh, I think stopping Derrick Henry will be a priority, which means play action, which means Julio Jones. I think, uh, you know, eight targets, 128 yards, almost a touchdown. I want to give you confidence to start Julio this week. Put him in your lineup. There were people scared of doing that last week, but get him in there. Mike, finish us off with your tight end start of the week. And this is – This let, is deep. Let me clarify. This is a tight end stream of the week, and I, I want to highlight that this player – this guy's name – I like uh, if I had Jason's guy on my roster, 
uh, who was who was a waiver wire pickup, I would play him. But I just want to bring this name up: Gerald Everett from the Seattle Seahawks. He was tied for the ninth most routes at the tight end position last week. He saw his snaps jump all the way up to eighty percent. He's in the highest over under of the week with Seattle taking on the Minnesota Vikings, and he hasn't done much. He caught a touchdown in week one, but that's because everything that that Russ and Tyler Lockett are doing right now is working. It's connecting like every single time, and that will not be the case all season long. Tyler Lockett's not going to keep catching 50-yard touchdowns week in and week out. And so Gerald Everett, I think, is a name that you need to monitor that he could have a he could have a four reception uh, you know, four for 50 and a score this week, and then all of a sudden people are scrambling to pick up Gerald Everett. So you, if you're in a, a dirty, mucky tight end situation, I think that you should consider putting Everett on your bench. Yeah, when I mean, I, I think you can put him into your lineup because um, whenever you stream tight end for the half of the league or a, you know a third of the league that really has to find someone every week, what you're looking for is touchdowns, and Russ is going to throw a lot, so uh, there's upside there. My start of the week is Jared Cook. Um, the reason is because when you're rolling with someone like Cook, someone you picked up off the waivers last week, the worst thing you can do when you're in that situation as a team is be completely results oriented. If you do that, you're always going to be chasing the last week and you're never going to get the good games. He was on the field enough. He was targeted enough, targeted in the red zone. He even got a touchdown that was called back on penalty. Yeah. I personally would not be dropping him to move on to a different guy. Agreed. Just always looking for, well, you disappointed me last week. Um, tight ends suck outside of the top guys. And I'm going to roll again with Cook. And I'm going to cheat code this one, but I feel like I have to because – People are freaking out. We had the Spotify Green Room show yesterday mm -hmm. where Jason's player of concern for the rest of the season was George Kittle. It's time to shine. The Packers got torched um, by Hawkinson. They got torched by Jawan Johnson in week one. It put George Kittle at the top of your list this week. I think he's the number one overall tight end at the end of the week. I think everybody takes a deep breath, and they are they, they're smiling about their draft capital that they invested it's time to calm the fears, and George Kittle does it this week. I like almost everything you said, except for the number one overall tight end this week. I think you forgot about Travis Kelsey. And I say that because um, – <laughs> I expected a Hawkins in there, but uh, okay. No, because Gronk – Gronk's been unbelievable. Gronk, Gronk, Three Gronk. touchdowns in two weeks, oh, super involved. So I just assumed he was the tight end one, and then I was like uh, – Four touchdowns. Oh, uh, four touchdowns. It's and still Kelsey. It's still Kelsey. He's just so, – it's I, unbeatable. I think, I think, though, that we're saying – if you can if you can snake Saquon Barkley away for uh, this week or George Kittle, you would recommend going after both of those guys. I've got a third one for you too. You want another trade target? Yes, please. DK Metcalf. Go get okay. him. Go oh, get I him. Go get him now. Eleven yep. targets last week. He will be on the other end of these bomb touchdowns. It won't be Freddie Swain and it won't be Lockett every week. Metcalf is a buy right now. All right. More importantly. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. Well, my bowels are cleared out. Now it's time to hit the hay. Sleep soundly this week with the Rams, Matt Gay. Yes. First of all, that was, that was very beautiful. That was wonderful. Be <laughs> yes. Second of all, <laughs> I'm not sure what sleeping soundly with him means. Oh, hey, 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 now. No, I just mean like, like I guess you sleep soundly because yes, he's in you your lineup. Yes, you sleep like a baby because Matt Gay's out there crushing it. And yeah. then thirdly, this is a narrative that's now, it, you've crafted three weeks of a story. You were I, pooping standing I've, up last I've, week. I've been peeing, I've been pooping, my bowels are cleared out, now I need time for a nap. I can't tell you how much I'm looking forward to week four already. Yeah, it's a lot. Well, we want to thank pristineauction.com. <laughs> Kyler Murray signed jersey, 52 bucks right now. Ends on Tuesday night. Chris Godman signed helmet, 50 bucks right now. Whew. All right. Hundreds of daily sports memorabilia auctions. Use the code BALLERS at pristineauction.com. That'll do it for today's episode. We'll tackle the rest of the matchups on Friday, tomorrow. Enjoy that uh, Ingram time tonight. I know I will. Goodbye. 
you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.